Hi, and welcome to another video in our video demo series. Today we're going to be looking at monitoring NetElastic BNG and CGNAT router using SNMP. For today's demo, we're going to look at using uh, SNMP monitoring using the open source tool Zabbix. It's uh, very popular and common out there and very powerful, although we do support any SNMP monitoring tool that you may already have in your network. But first, let's take a look at the NetElastic Virtual BNG and CGNAT solutions. The NetElastic BNG and CGNAT solutions are built on NetElastic's high-performance virtual router. Uh, the virtual router provides the high-performance data plane as the basis for all the rest of the functionality. Of course, it supports all of the uh, internet network protocols that carriers and service providers rely on including BGP up to uh, 2 million routes to support uh, full route tables for peering and transit routers. We support uh, VLANs, both single tag, double tag, and even triple tag, Q and Q and Q, which can be very helpful when aggregating uh, from multiple sites, OLTs, and even wholesale providers. Uh, VXLAN, uh, as well as uh, uh, link aggregation, uh, both static and LACP. And then from a monitoring and interface standpoint, we support SNMP, which we'll be looking at today, uh, as well as NetConf and a very familiar CLI. Uh, CGNAT is added on top of our vRouter as just a licensed feature. It's uh, tightly integrated with the data plane itself, so uh, it does not slow down when you're uh, enabling and using that functionality. And it allows for your IPv4 conservation on dual stack networks. We have very flexible session controls, so you can uh, limit uh, or expand the number of sessions you allow per subscriber and can help reduce the cost of your IPv4 uh, uh, purchase or leasing. And, of course, we have uh, compliant logging for any of your regulatory and law enforcement uh, requirements. Uh, our BNG feature set includes a full BNG functionality to help manage all of your subscribers, whether they're IPOE, PPPOE, or a mix, as well as several other types of uh, sessions and subscriber connections that we support. We also support L2TP, where we can uh, hand off PPPOE sessions to another ISP if you are uh, providing services on a wholesale basis. Of course, uh, the VLANs come in very handy where you can bring in uh, any of the traffic from multiple OLTs or DSLAMs or even uh, wholesale fiber providers that may have uh, some S-tags uh, that you need to manage. And then, of course, with uh, subscriber management and any BNG functionality, managing all of the subscriber rate plans and QoS is uh, you know, primary importance, and we handle that uh, very well. In fact, you can even use uh, priority queues at the interface level or for different services for instance, if you want to accelerate uh, priorities for speed tests or voice over IP services or anything like that. And then uh, our BNG license is also where uh, we pick up integration uh, for AAA and uh, be able to work with your in-house or um, you know, billing and radius vendor. On the network management side, uh, we support a very Cisco-like uh, CLI. It makes it very easy to learn and navigate. We also have NetConf uh, APIs uh, with Yang data models that allow you to further extend the functionality, add automation uh, based on your NetConf uh, scripting capabilities. And then if you are using our BNG Network Manager, it's a web-based GUI that gives you complete uh, visual operational network telemetry to see uh, how things are running on the network, uh, consumption, traffic capacities on interfaces, as well as detailed troubleshooting tools uh, that will be very helpful for your operations and support staff. And all of that can be provided on a role-based access so that you can provide uh, the support staff with just the tools that they need uh, without uh, giving them too much access to make changes to the network. But in addition to this, of course, we support SNMP. So SNMP is going to be helpful for interfacing to your existing monitoring tools. Uh, and today we're going to look at uh, Zabbix in our lab. But we also support Cacti, Nagios, really any SNMP-based uh, platform that you may be using in your network today. 
of course, we support all versions of SNMP. Uh, we can run in band uh, or out of band. We always recommend out of band uh, for network management uh, to a secure management network. But if your situation requires, we do support in band. We just recommend that you uh, uh, apply the appropriate firewall and ACL rules to limit who can access uh, the SNMP ports if you enable that. We support all of the public MIBs that you'd expect on a router, including all of the interface and routing uh, OIDs. And then we provide our own enterprise MIB. Uh, this will give you more details about uh, the specific NetElastic router and BNG uh, functionality. Everything from uh, the CPU and memory usage, uh, CGNAT session statistics, and all of the, the BNG operational details uh, that you need to look at. So to get started, let's look at how you uh, would get this set up. First, you're going to need to install the Elastic MIB into your monitoring host. This is already included in our software package, and there's also links to it in our software uh, configuration guide. Uh, you're going to want to install the MIB into your server's standard MIB repository, where all of the other MIBs uh, are uh, included. And then you're going to need to configure SNMP on the NetElastic router itself. So here's a screenshot of the CLI commands to enable SNMP on our router. But if you're using our web-based uh, management tool, you can also go into the configure, or configure Monitoring menu. Uh, and under SNMP, you can start to look at each of the different settings and set them graphically. So we're going to start by enabling the SNMP agent. Next, you will decide if you want in-band or out-of-band, or possibly both uh, access. Uh, if you want traps enabled, uh, you can choose to do that and then uh, set the trap destination host. Uh, if you're not going to use the standard SNMP ports, uh, you can alter those to custom ports there. You can even set the uh, in-band interface if you want to uh, restrict it to a particular one. Once you have applied those settings, you can uh, next go and uh, either alter or set your SNMP community. You also have the ability to set multiple views and uh, different community strings for limited um, sets of the, the MIB tree. So very flexible, uh, very easy to configure. Once you've configured it, you want to go back to your management host and just make sure everything's working. The easiest way to do that is with the Linux Net SNMP tools uh, from the monitoring host uh, in the CLI environment. And there you can just use a simple SNMP walk command to verify that you can communicate with the NetElastic router and that you're getting the proper MIB information back. Here's a sample output of just doing a system walk on the uh, system, or excuse me, SNMP walk on the system level, which is the highest level. And on that second line, you can see that it's reporting back the uh, descriptive name of the NetElastic MIB. So you know that you have everything installed correctly. From there, you could you know, do an SNMP walk against the entire enterprise MIB and browse through it to see uh, what interesting OIDs uh, may be present and uh, might be useful for you to monitor. Once all that's established, then you can uh, start to add uh, some of these elements to your Zabbix configuration. Some of the useful OIDs that you may want to uh, monitor through Zabbix or any of the uh, management tools that you use. Of course, anything in the, uh, the public interface MIB. That's where you're going to collect any of your uh, upload, download, operational status for any of the interfaces, including VLAN sub-interfaces that uh, the V the virtual router is running. Uh, more specific to, uh, say, like the BNG, uh, we can uh, monitor through the NetElastic Flex BNG IP pool uh, tree any of your the consumption of your, your various IP pools that you've configured. So you don't want those to run out. They generally don't, but it uh, might be useful to, to monitor consumption. Then within the SMGR, S Manager, uh, that's really the subscriber manager uh, tree, that's where you can pull up very detailed information, not only by uh, looking at how many subscribers you have online by 
given type, IPOE, PPPOE, or total. But you can also drill down to specific individual subscriber stats and look at and monitor long-term their upload, their download, any of their drop packets, uh, things like that. And uh, it's very useful uh, for smaller providers that don't have you know, tens of thousands of subscribers where it might get uh, a little too much data for your Zabbix uh, installation. But we do monitor it. Uh, on the uh, NAT tree, uh, you can collect and monitor all of your CG NAT session statistics, uh, both total as well as broken down by type. And then uh, generic uh, system info uh, where you can monitor uh, CPU and RAM usage of the virtual router itself. All of those can be very helpful as you uh, um, are monitoring over time. So let's uh, switch over and actually look at uh, Zabbix Live. So now let's look at Zabbix itself. So here we're logged into Zabbix, monitoring one of our BNGs in our lab with uh, just a couple test subscribers. Here uh, we've set up a couple of uh, graphs that are automatically monitoring the number of subscribers on the platform. You can see that it just uh, went from two to three for a period of time. Now it's back at two. Uh, we can see the, the, the number of NAT sessions uh, over time, uh, some network traffic on one of the interfaces, and uh, even a snapshot of one of the users that's online. Now, of course, within Zavix, this is just a dashboard view where you can look at multiple uh, graphs, but you can also uh, go down and look at actual individual graphs of all the data elements that you're monitoring. Here's an example of monitoring an individual user. Uh, this user is the IPOE, so they're uh, defined by their TACP uh, MAC address. Um, and we're monitoring their upload, download for unicast, same for multicast, and any of their drop packets. And having that all overlaid on a single chart that's graphed over time. And that can be uh, days, weeks, years, depending on your Zavix configuration. But we can also switch to any of the other graphs that we've uh, set up. Uh, we can look at the uh, number of subscribers online, and we can change the... Uh, period, see over time how that's looked, um, and uh, that can be quite helpful, particularly if uh, for trending and uh, things like that. Uh, we can also look at our NAT sessions. So I mentioned the uh, NAT session OID. We can track that. Of course, we support up to 4 million sessions uh, per um, CG NAT instance. Uh, this is just a small example with uh, just a couple subscribers in our lab. Uh, we can also look at any of the interfaces, uh, our dedicated radius interface, uh, any of our uh, sub-interfaces and VLANs that we're using, uh, including our main uh, network traffic uh, interface that we've got, uh, which really only helps traffic when we are running demo traffic, but uh, you can see some of that uh, there over the last uh, seven days. And we can scroll in and look at particular uh, time zones, uh, or back to uh, whatever standard you want. So all of that data is being archived in the Zavix database and then just presented as you need it. So that's just a, a quick example of uh, how you might monitor uh, different elements of the BNG through Zavix. Uh, you may be wondering how we configured some of these things. So uh, Zavix has a rich set of templates and host items. Uh, and, and very extensible. What we did here is uh, on the items, uh, we used all of the standard ones that were included, uh, including their network uh, interface discovery tools to automatically discover all of the interfaces on the router and automatically set up all of the detailed uh, collection, collection items for each one of those. So it made it very easy to build out all of these without having to do individual configurations. Uh, we also manually created the users, uh, and here's an example of uh, dropped traffic uh, for a particular user. Uh, it is based on uh, index values, so you're going to want to uh, use some of the built-in macro capabilities to match the uh, subscriber name uh, back to its index so that as the subscriber goes offline and then back online, 
and their index is updated, that Zabbix will uh, be smart enough to know that uh, it has a new index. And of course, uh, Zabbix has um, macro and discovery tools to allow you to automate that uh, for an, a, a large set of subscribers. Uh, and just going back to my hosts, uh, we also used, uh, as I mentioned, discovery uh, and uh, graph prototypes and uh, trigger prototypes and item prototypes to help automate uh, with some of the scale. And all of that is built into uh, Zabbix itself. So I hope that gives you a, a, a nice overview uh, of what you could possibly do to incorporate uh, NetElastic Virtual Router BNG and CGNAT uh, into your existing network monitoring environments. Again, this is just Zabbix. It could have been Nagios, Cacti, MRTG, PRTG, or any of the SNMP monitoring platforms that you may be using in your network. I hope this was useful, and thanks for watching. You've been watching a video demo and discussion on SNMP and how to uh, monitor NetElastic Virtual Router, CGNAT, uh, and BNG uh, with your SNMP tools. hope this has been helpful. If you would like more information, please reach out to sales at netelastic.com, and we'd be happy to discuss uh, this further with you. Thank you.